Mornings on 2 is hitting the road for a zip trip to Petaluma. This is the heart of Petaluma's downtown. Victorian buildings, modern buildings, Spanish style. I mean, it's really the old part of town. We're bringing you to some of the city's favorite restaurants, bakeries, and world famous breweries. We're a global destination, probably because you can find our beer, you know, all, all over the globe. And we're definitely national, so all 50 states. Plus, we're taking a cruise on the Petaluma River, where you can enjoy all the outdoor activities this North Bay city has to offer. It's just an amazing recreational resource. It's incredible. There's nothing like it anywhere. And anyone up for some trivia? The Hollywood star that calls Petaluma her hometown. Oh, my God, of course. I think she grew up here. She grew up here. What? I'm yes. obsessed with her. I didn't know she grew up here. As Mornings on 2 takes you on a zip trip to Petaluma. Welcome to the Nine and good morning, gorgeous Petaluma. Grab your paddleboard, throw your kayak on top of the car and head on over. This river is the heart of the city. The spectacular sights, the delicious bites, we have it all covered in our first zip trip of the season. We'll focus a lot on what the Petaluma River has to offer this gorgeous North Bay town. We will also bring you an awful lot of live music this morning. I know you've heard these guys play. Welcome and thank you to Spike Sykes and his awesome hotcakes. They have been stirring it up for the past hour or so, playing in this gorgeous sunshine. They are one of the best bands here in Petaluma, and we have them for this entire zip trip. And we will swing back down to the water because we can't talk about the Petaluma River enough. This waterway, of course, meant industry and business for this town for so long, but now it means recreation and natural beauty. So our first zip trip of the summer season takes us to Petaluma, zip code 949525455, maybe a couple of others. Here's how you get here. Take 101 and just keep on heading north. We are so excited to be out again. It is going to be a great morning here in Petaluma. If you haven't gone anywhere for the past two years like some people here, how about we make Petaluma your first stop for family fun, delicious food, and great, exciting events. We have the whole band back, and not just that band, I mean our band. We have Sal and Frank, different parts around town here. And Sal, I have to say, you drew the long straw once again. You kind of ate your way through Petaluma and learned a lot about this gorgeous town, didn't you? I did, Garcia, and you know, there are so many places to eat, and I went to a lot of them. There's yeah. no way I could get to all of them. There are some places that I just couldn't go to uh, because there's just not enough time, but we did a good sampling of what to eat here in Petaluma. We also went to the world-famous brewery, Lagunitas, uh, and you'll be able to see a little bit more about that, but one of the things that you might not know about Petaluma is almost on every corner, there's some place to eat, there are a lot of breweries, uh, there are bars and restaurants just everywhere, so come hungry if you're coming here. And also Petaluma, by the way, has a rich history. A lot of things went on here, including some movies that I love that were filmed here. Uh, Frank Malicote, you know, you had my attention when you said American Graffiti, and I won't steal your thunder, but anything that you do about that movie, I'm going to listen to, Frank. <laughs> Well, you already did. That's the answer to one of our trivia questions. But we had a lot of fun here this past week kind of testing the knowledge of the locals here. Did you know this used to be the chicken capital of the world? They used to call it Chickaluma years ago. And the first piece of mail ever airmailed air here in the United States actually left Santa Rosa in 1911, went from here to Santa Rosa. So, and there's a few heavy hitters, movie stars, and one San Francisco giant Everybody knows that he was born right here in Petaluma. We're going to share all that, and you're going to meet this wonderful band. Take it away, Spike and his awesome hotcakes. Go ahead, guys. We'll talk to the band and much more. We'll send it over to Garcia now. I mean, look. If you are in the area of the Balshaw Pedestrian Bridge right on Water Street, go grab a little something maybe from the Bagel Mill, maybe a little something from Sunrise Donuts. Get your coffee and meet us down here for our first summer zip trip of the season in gorgeous Petaluma. We'll talk about that name Petaluma for a second here. It comes from the Miwok Village that was right along this river, Petaluma. I know a lot of us think of chickens and eggs when we think about this little North Bay town, but there is a lot more to explore. So let's take a minute now to look back on the rich history of Petaluma. 
Petaluma's history winds much like the river that runs right through downtown. Like many of the world's great cities, Petaluma's incorporation in 1858 and eventual growth can be tied directly to a waterway, in this case, the Petaluma River. In the gold rush era, the town's riverfront location made it possible to ship poultry, grain and dairy products to the booming populations of Oakland and San Francisco. Petaluma's growing egg industry spurred the tagline, the world's egg basket, which the city still celebrates with the annual Butter and Eggs Day Parade. Now you can find all types of recreation on the river, including kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and river cruises. Though the use of the river has changed over the last century and a half, it remains an important part of Petaluma's economy. Petaluma's downtown was spared from much of the 1906 earthquake, meaning many of its buildings have foundations that were put down 150 years ago. Today, those buildings are home to specialty stores, restaurants and galleries. The city's population of about 60,000 flocked to Petaluma's many parks for hiking, biking and running. If you're more into food and drink than the outdoors, Petaluma has you covered there as well. From bakeries to fine dining, bistros to saloons, the city has so much to offer. And raise a glass to the brand that put Petaluma on its beer labels and shipped nationwide. The Lagunitas Brewery started on a Northern California stove 30 years ago and is now pouring tens of thousands of pints every year. Its original tap room is right here in Petaluma. And it's incredible that Petaluma still has that small town feel that we all remember from decades ago. Look, when I first started coming here, I was like stuck in the middle of the backseat of my parents' station wagon back in the 80s. And when I was coming up just today, I thought this town has a lot of that same feel. Small town, but not that far from a big city. Let's talk about someone who has given an awful lot to this beautiful North Bay town by welcoming the mayor of Petaluma. Good morning to you, Teresa Barrett. Thanks for being with us on our first zip trip of the summer. Of course, of course. Now, you have served the city of Petaluma in one way or another for 25 years. 16 on the council, four most recently as mayor. Tell me what you're most proud of when you look back on your gorgeous town. I guess what I'm most proud of is what got me started doing this in the first place, and that is being able to keep this town, uh, just as you mentioned, the beautiful, wonderful place that it is. Yeah. And, I mean, this town has grown a lot. Housing, businesses. How did you manage, and tell me about some of the push and pull that was involved in still keeping that small town feel. Well, early on in the 90s, we had a vote among the people here to keep what was called to set up an urban growth boundary, which meant the city could not go out wider. And so in order to do that, the, the impetus to do that was to preserve the agricultural area around us and also keep the city small and keep it so that it actually functioned really well and it it was an overwhelming vote by the voters yeah. to do that yeah. and so that meant we grew up instead yeah. of out yeah i mean agriculture is so important can i tell you you have one of my favorite farmers markets on saturdays if you're in the area what are some of the gems of petaluma you always highlight when people say oh petaluma where's that um i say petaluma is you know on the petaluma river which is a very small river, but it's actually the uh, third largest um, river with with um, commercial uh, travel in in the state of California. Only because we don't have a lot of rivers like other places. Right. So um, we are a city that faces our river, and we just had it dredged a couple of years ago. So we're now the destination for a lot of yachts and and uh, people that come to our yacht club. So. That's one thing that I always tell people about is our river. And I know that, you know, we're going to bring in Claudine Wong a little bit later because there's been a big push to democratize the river, right? Maybe I don't have a yacht. Maybe I'm not part of a fancy club. So tell me about those efforts to really make sure that Petaluma is open to all. Well, that is true. And um, you, we have a lot of events that happen around our river that it do include things like, um, you know, design a boat that is only done by uh, by human power, no, no, no motors. Yeah. And then we have little contests with that. That's part of our Rivertown Revival, yeah. which is a big uh, event here in July. Yep that uh, has just taken off and it's going to be started up again. And you just had the Butter and Egg Festival. Yes, we do. I mean, what That's... a sweet little name. I mean, tell me about, you know, again, Petaluma in many ways hasn't changed, but we have to note, you're, you've are you decided to leave office soon, right? Yes. What would you say to the next mayor of Petaluma about what's most important about this town and this job? Well, 
The thing that's most important about this town is our community, and it's really very accepting. But it also, we also have high standards that we know why we're here and what we love, and we want to preserve that. But we also want to welcome other people here too, because that's how it makes it work: is that we're all very open to others. And so um, I would want that person to have that same attitude and just work well with others. Yeah. And I have to say, I mean, these past two years of pandemic living ha have put every small town through the ringer. What are you most proud of when it comes to Petaluma during the pandemic? Again, it's our community yeah. and that, that, is, that includes our staff, which worked unbelievably in hard, hard circumstances yeah. and did such a good job and is still doing a great job working with our businesses, working with our nonprofits, just making sure that no one slips through the cracks. Yeah. And that's critical. That, that community feel is still is here. Big. I congratulate you on 25 years of service to this beautiful North Bay City. Thank you so much for your time this morning and for rolling out the welcome mat to oh, everyone absolutely. here. absolutely. Everybody's Pet welcome to Petaluma. Absolutely. I'll see you at the farmer's market tomorrow. Thank How's you. that? Thank you, Mayor, so much. Okay. Uh, look, coming up, we're going to talk about more wonderful things that Petaluma has to offer. When it comes to trivia, right, we like to try to stump those people who are lucky enough to grow up in this town. And boy, our Frank Malico did it. A couple famous names. Some you might know, some you probably don't. So we will put your zip trip knowledge sure. to the test when we come back on this gorgeous Friday on the 9. Stay with us. Are you kidding me? Spike Sykes and his awesome hotcakes, bringing it all morning long here in gorgeous Petaluma at the Balshaw Pedestrian Bridge right on Water Street. We're talking soul, swing, rhythm and blues, jazz, jump. These guys have been playing since it was cold and cloudy out here this morning, but the sun is shining on this beautiful North Bay town. What a great start to zip trip season. I am so glad you're here with us. If you are anywhere near Petaluma, come on down and say hello because we have a great, great thing going here. Live music, Petaluma. River. I saw a guy in a Grateful Dead shirt in a kayak just a second ago, and I thought, man, this town hasn't changed. Let's talk about some things maybe you don't know about Petaluma. We'll bring in our Frank Malico. Frank, you got to zip up here not too long ago, and you talked with some long-time locals. You tried to stump them, and it sounds like you did. I certainly did. The band is rocking. I hope you can hear me here, folks. But uh, do you know how Petaluma got its name? It actually is me walking Indian for the other side of the hill, meaning Sonoma Hill, which is not too far from here. It's also the birthplace and the home to some big, heavy hitters. Who are they? Well, I took to the streets of Petaluma to see, do the Petalumans really know their city? Here you go. He was part of all He's three World Series championships with the Giants uh, from 2010 to 2014, and he was born here in Petaluma. Any idea who that might be? Will Clark? No, he's a little Shoot. too old too. Yeah, you're doing well. <sighs> who else is there? He was the manager. I don't know. No. If I told you he was not a player, would that help? If I told you he had a husky voice and was 70, would that help? No. I'm from Israel, so we are, have zero knowledge of baseball. Oh, come on. <laughs> not Willie Mays, is it? No, Willie was not on those teams. He's a little too old. Uh, Buster? No, oh! <laughs> no, that's close. It starts with a B. Try it again. And I know it's not Brandon. Think manager. Not the Brandon. Think manager. Oh, Bruce Bochy. Yes. And, and Amy G. Amy G, okay. I, I got it. My brain just Good slows. knowledge. Yeah. A film that was directed by George Lucas, and it was produced by Francis Ford Coppola. And part of it was filmed here in Petaluma. Any idea what that film is? And not The Godfather? Uh, not The Godfather, no. Um, here in Petaluma. I feel like, no. I never wanted this for you. Not American Graffiti. Uh, well, is that your final answer? Or Peggy Sue Got Married. Uh, that doesn't sound like George Lucas. <laughs> big, big hit back in the uh, early 70s. What was that? American, American graffiti. graffiti. Yeah, everyone knows that. The, the parking lot where the car axle was tied to a the cop car to a cop car was just the other side of that wall. Oh, 
A gal that graduated from Petaluma High in 1989, Academy Award nominee, and another guy that was a huge actor in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, has two sons that turned into big movie stars as well. He graduated in 1930. Any idea who they may be? I had the name, but it sort of Take just, a stab. just left. Just go. Um, Lucas? George Lucas? George <clears throat> Lucas, yeah. Maybe. Like, he's a director. Okay. So. Oh, what's her name? Winona Ryder? Yes. 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 The first one. Oh. The only one that I could think of it would be the female who did Peggy Sue Got Married, but that's the only one I could think of. And who was that? Uh, Her initials are WR. Winona Ryder, ring a bell? The, oh my God, of course. I did, she grew up here. She grew up here. What? I'm what? obsessed with her. I didn't know she grew up here. And you haven't met her yet? Of course not. Not yet. So that would have been Lloyd Bridges. Uh, yes. Okay, Lloyd Bridges <coughs> is one, and the, and the more recent one is, what is her name? Is it Winona Ryder? Who? Winona Ryder? Yes, that's it. Then are you sure? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You guys just want some Eskimo pies. <laughs> Back in the 50s, it started in a bar, and then it became a very big event. It went national, then global, and it put Petaluma on the map for a good 40, 50 years. Not egg and butter. Uh, well, that did too, but this <laughs> And is... it's now a 420 as well. Uh, no, it's not 420. It's a sporting event. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah. Nash uh, pillow. Pillow fights. Pillow fighting. Yeah. Yes, sorry, I was thinking arm wrestling too. Pillow fight. I did not know <laughs> Petaluma was known for pillow fighting. I know. What? What's that? I don't know what to say. Like, when, with the hands yes. that they're taking down. Yes. Okay. The only thing I would think of is the wrestling, arm wrestling. And you would be right. <laughs> Started in a bar in the 50s and then became a national and then a global <laughs> event. Wrist wrestling. What is wrestling. Wrist wrestling. Yes. Did you guys participate? No. No. I remember as a kid watching it well. It was the uh, arm wrestling championships on Wild World of Sports back in the 60s and 70s. Good stuff. Also, a big shout out to our former sports director, Mark Cabanas, a proud grad of Petaluma High back in 1973. We miss you, Mark. I'm going to go boogie to this music a little bit. We're going to meet the band, Spike and his awesome hotcakes. Gassia, we'll see you in a bit. Absolutely. You're not supposed to say the last two years of when the person went to school here. I mean, I love seeing old yearbook photos. I have seen Winona Riders. The Bruce Bochy was a surprise to me, so I love Zip Trip Trivia. Even for those of us like Frank and I who were lucky enough to grow up in the Bay Area, oh, we're still God. learning things, and it's nice when he can stump Petaluminatus. Now, let's talk about coming here. We mentioned the farmer's market that's tomorrow, one of my favorite things to do when I'm up here. Something else I love to do is just grab a sandwich and stroll. You guys have been flooding KTVU.com with your picture. Picks of Petaluma, we asked, and boy, did you answer. When it came to your favorite spot for family fun, you let us know. And we have some of the top picks that you guys all agreed on and kept writing us about. So when it comes to your favorite place for family fun here in gorgeous Petaluma, the top choices include Hallam Putnam Regional Park, Brewster's Beer Garden, Butcher Crown Roadhouse, and Lucchese Park. So look, you can spend an entire day here, whether you have just, you know, your special someone or a whole bunch of little special someones with you. When we come back, we're going to make sure that you do not leave this town hungry. Our South Castaneda came up here just not too long ago. He tasted sort of high and low, right? Fancy schmancy and then food trucks and everything in between. If you have $5.50 or more, you can spend it well eating in Petaluma and when we come back Sal is going to take us on a taste of this gorgeous town so stay with us our zip trip in gorgeous Petaluma continues this Friday morning Sal's doing his package. The nine gorgeous oh, Petaluma bringing it all this morning. We're here at the Balshaw Pedestrian oh, Bridge right on Water Street. Oh, and what a gorgeous morning and what a perfect place to kick off our summer zip trip series. Look, if you're here in Petaluma and it's early, we have, you know, donuts, bagels, muffins, everything breakfast like. Lunch we have you covered. Dinner we have you more than covered. If you do fourth meal, Petaluma has that for you too. And a little something to drink along the way. Our South Castaneda joins me now live in Petaluma. And Sal, we have to note here, when it comes to your taste of the town, 
Petaluma, we just talked with the mayor about the importance of agriculture in this region, right? Petaluma has been doing farm to table long before it was cool. And you got a taste of some of that. I did. And by the way, guys, here you're right across the street or right there in front of you, uh, Cucina Paradiso and Reese BC Seared Steakhouse. I've tried all of those. They're all very good. In fact, if you come to Petaluma, you will not leave hungry. I th think you, I heard you say that uh, you can go cheap, you can go expensive, you can go middle ground, you can drink beer or wine. I went out and tried all kinds of things in Petaluma, and here is what I found. Petaluma is a town that still has a rural side. Not too far from downtown, it looks like a scene from yesteryear. You might suspect a place with a history of raising chickens and other livestock would have some good food associated with it. You'd be right. However, the Petaluma food scene has evolved from its humble beginnings. I feel like it's gone from a little more meat and potatoes to kind of having a lot more diversification. A good example is right here on Kentucky Street downtown. This is where Chef Christian Cagliazzo and his wife Katrina Fried run Stellina Pronto, a strictly takeout Italian bakery. Here you'll find house-made pastries, sandwiches, and fancy Italian sodas. The small kitchen is running all day long, and the gourmet coffee and the service are what people rave about. They do know me by name. They start my coffees before I show up. And can we talk about the decor, the flowers, how lovely it is? Kayato's history of working at Michelin star-rated eateries really shows here. If you visit, you owe it to yourself to try to warm focaccia bread and an artisan brew often made by Christian himself. But let's get back to that meat and potatoes and head down the street to Sax Joint. Although it doesn't look like a diner from the outside, when you walk in, you're transported back to the American graffiti era. Motorcycles, old Coca-Cola bottles, and other Americana will set the table for huge plates of French toast, eggs, burgers, everything you'd expect from a true 1950s diner. And I always enjoy checking a place out by seeing what comes out of the window. Yeah, you'd better come hungry. We also have a little joke that we like to say, is if you're hungry when you leave, McDonald's is down the road. Everybody laughs. You won't leave hungry. This is a family business run by mom and her daughters. They make you feel welcome and taken care of while you're here. I'll be right back, you guys. So once you're good in the food department, you might want a beer. There are a lot of local breweries, but one of them is now a global player. It's the Lagunitas Brewery. When I walked in, I got the feeling I was in beer Disneyland. There's a gift shop, bar, and a spacious patio for you to sample some of what made this brewery world famous. We're a global destination, probably because you can find our beer, you know, all, all over the globe. And we're definitely national, so all 50 states. So people, you know, see that dog, they see the beer, they try the beer. And then there's just something about going to the source that's special. The nice people here will be more than happy to talk beer with you all day, and you can always get brews here that you can't get in the store. And if you're hungry, the wings and the burger are my recommendations. Petaluma has so many good places to eat, we couldn't possibly show all of them, but I wanted to throw in a great Italian restaurant called Cocina Paradiso on the Riverwalk. Again, look at the dishes coming out of the window. A few doors down, you can taste house-made ice cream at Lala's Creamery. And you can get delicious authentic Mexican food at Elroy's Taqueria, which can be found in one of these orange food trucks. Yeah, this is a real deal. And you know, right when I finished doing that, of course the locals said, did you try this place? Did you try that place? Because that is not an exhaustive list. I want to try Mi Pueblo next. I want to try Central Market. Uh, I went to Brewster's last year. It was great. So there's just so many places to try. And by the way, on our website, if you want to go to ktvu.com, that whole Lagunitas tasting you saw me do, there's a longer form where I sit down with Jeremy, the brewmaster, and we go through a flight of beer. If you are a beer person, uh, go to our website. That whole uncut interview is there, Garcia. So um, this is, you know, this is a tough assignment. I promise to keep doing this all summer just for KTVU and our viewers. <laughs> you want to extend the summer zip trip season all year round. If I can throw in one of my personal favorites here, if you haven't been to the Petaluma Pie Company, I'm talking sweet pies, savory pies. You can have lunch and dessert right from the same shop. Petaluma Pie Company going strong. I picked up a stack of pies for my sister's wedding and I was like, must drive carefully because you can't have those pies crumble. So. 
I'll throw in my pick. Sal, thank you for all the hard work you've done with Taste of the Town here in Petaluma. And you're right. You we've it. been turning to our viewers for their recommendations. And boy, you guys responded in a big way. We asked you to go to KTVU.com and tell us your pick of Petaluma. We just ran down our favorite family fun places. And now we're going to run down your favorite restaurants here in Petaluma. Topping the list when it comes to your favorite restaurants in Petaluma, we have Butcher Crown Roadhouse, Mi Pueblo, Sugo Trattoria, and Reese BC. So a couple of these we uh, learned about in Sal's Taste of the Town. A couple might be new to you, but Petaluma, you spoke, and these are your favorites. All right. When we come back, we are still here along the Balshaw Pedestrian Bridge. The, the, the clouds are coming up, but still, it's a gorgeous, soft morning. A lot of people are gathering here, listening to the live music and getting a great start to their day. If you want to take a trip down the river, it is easier now more than ever. Our clean, Claudine Wong came up here to really spotlight an important part of Petaluma, the Petaluma River, and how it's now open to just about everybody. We're talking about democratizing one of the jewels of Petaluma. So when we come back, you'll learn more about the float house here in Petaluma and what it's Doing for our community. So stay with us. That's coming up in just a second here on KTVU The Nine. Our first zip trip of the summer season finds us in gorgeous Petaluma. Stay with us. When we asked, these guys answered in a big way. They have been rocking since early this morning. Spike Sykes and his awesome hotcakes. These guys will play your gig, and they're playing for us this morning. An incredible job by these gentlemen just bringing Petaluma to life. We're here along the Belshaw Pedestrian Bridge on Water Street. Look, if there's a better start to your Friday, I don't know what that looks like, because when you have a river on this side, a band over there, and all the shops and restaurants you could walk a stone, stone's throw away, I'd like to stay right here. Welcome to Petaluma. It's a gorgeous start to our zip trip season. And this morning we are highlighting all that Petaluma has to offer you. So maybe you've had a meal here. Maybe you've done the farmer's market. Maybe you've seen a show. But have you actually taken a kayak down the river? Have you gotten on a stand-up paddleboard and tested your core strength? Well, guess what? Our Claudine Wong had the awesome assignment of really highlighting how the float house, which is new in Petaluma, is really aiming to open up the waterway to everyone. Here's Claudine. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. Petaluma is a place where literally the river runs through it. Still, getting on the water is tougher than you might think. And this summer, that is all about to change. It doesn't take long before the charm of the Petaluma River just pulls you in. This is the heart of Petaluma's downtown. Victorian buildings, modern buildings, Spanish style. I mean, it's really the old part of town. But the problem is not the water or the view. It's, it's just an amazing recreational resource. It's incredible. There's nothing like it anywhere, I think. The challenge is getting on the water. There is a limited number of docks and no hourly watercraft rentals. There is a lot, but people don't have access to get to the river easily. You have to join a club, right? You have to join the rowing club or the outrigger club or the kayak club, which is also great, it's, but it's a different it's a different activity. That's because historically, the river has been all business. You've got industrial on one side here. Used by commercial industries for transportation. So up until like five, six years ago, this area was still looked at as a business, not recreation. But when you start looking at it for recreation, it seems like the possibilities are endless. You can go 13 miles to the mouth of the river. And then you can go from the mouth of the river empties into San Pablo Bay. You head west to Carquinas and eventually to Benicia, your hometown. And then you can also go down to the top of San Francisco Bay into the city. But how do you solve the access problem? So it's always been a dream of us, the group, together, that we would have a dock, a rental dock here, with different watercraft available. That dream launched a journey by the nonprofit, the Petaluma Small Craft Center. More than a decade later, and with almost a million dollars in fundraising, the float house project is a reality. The dock is ready. Kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and even electric boats are all on standby at a warehouse. And the group says everyone will be invited to use the water. That's one of our core missions, is to provide river access for all. Yeah, this is for everyone. So we welcome everybody to the float house. So, esto es para todo, 
Todos son bienvenidos aquí. It is easy to imagine what could be. With the smart train station a block away, people from Marin and Sonoma County can come here, spend the day here, rent a boat for an hour or two, which no one has done to date, and then have time to have lunch or dinner or stay the night. Easy to see what will soon be shared. There's a tremendous amount, other than the geese we're seeing right now, a tremendous amount of egrets and herons and pipers and all sorts of birds on the river. Every day is different and you can go out and then by the time you turn around and come back, it feels like a whole different day. A new day and a brand new future on the water. And it's been, it has been a dream for me. And, and I just kept saying, Claudine, that when, not if, when this is completed, the people will come. So if you're trying hard to be patient now, wondering when the float house is actually going to open for business, look to July. They have to do a few more things, a little more fundraising, and then they should be good to go. We'll send it back to you. And July will be here before we know it. Claudine Wong, thank you. Let's talk about one of the highlights of being here in Petaluma this morning, and that is the live music. Frank Malico, did you play? Were you a musician at all in, you know, in your earlier years? Because I see you kind of bouncing along to the band there with Spike, and I'm afraid you're going to actually run away and join the band if you could. I'm sorry, Garcia, but how can you not kind of bump along to Spike Sykes and his awesome hotcakes? My dad was a bass fiddle player years ago and a piano player, so I got music in my veins. I play a little guitar, but here's Spike. First of all, where did the hotcakes come from? Well, the name for the band came from a sign uh, actually in uh, downtown San Francisco. There was a diner downtown called Top's Diner. They had a sign advertising that they sold awesome hotcakes, and I thought that sounded like a pretty good band name. I like those... I like those long band names like Asleep at the Wheel and the Average White Band, that stuff. Oh, Asleep at the Wheel. Good yeah. Texas swing. Love that. And you got Texas roots, right? I sure do, yeah. I, uh, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, and then I went to college up in, uh, near Dallas in the uh, University of North Texas. And then after college, I joined the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard brought me out to this part of California. And then... Uh, they also took me to Maine and to uh, New Orleans. Uh, all right. So. Well, I spent a little time in New England as well. Uh, can you s describe your music? I feel like a little Van Morrison meets something else. What do you think? Well, there's absolutely some of that kind of stuff in there. Uh, you know, it's I would tell people there's kind of a jazz, soul, rhythm and blues, jump blues thing. You know, a lot of... Uh, Horn-based kind of music, soul music, that kind of thing. And I'm loving it. Introduce the band for us, Mike. So we got Mr. Rick Clifford over here on the tenor saxophone. Yeah. And then uh, that's Tracy Rose on the drums. Nice. And then Mark Malazzo is playing the bass guitar. All right. Well, you guys, uh, you got a little entourage here. Tell us where you're playing if folks want to come up and see you. Where do we go? So uh, the best place to check us out is on our website, uh, awesomehotcakes.com. We, um, we're playing all over the county, all over uh, Napa, Sonoma, and Marin this summer. Uh, we'll be at the Petaluma Music Festival on um, July 9th. I'm actually opening for Tower of Power oh, at wow. uh, Rodney Strong. And, um, yeah, so, we, you know, a lot of gigs this summer. Well, I guess so, and we hope you get a, a whole bunch more. Thank oh, you very, thank much, you very Mike. much, By the way, these guys played last night. They got up at God's Hours this morning to play on our Zip Trip. So we thank you, fellas. All the best to the hot cakes and Spike right here. Got it? Absolutely. Look, when you love doing it, you'll do it whenever. I'm so glad that they're able to bring us their beautiful music. I'm a huge fan of live music. I have the man who brings live music to so many parts of town. Petaluma Pete with me here. And you have your instrument. And this is not something you can pop in a case and take with you. You are famous for playing the piano all over town. Tell me how you got the name Petaluma Pete and what's your mission with your music? Well, my uh, real name is John Maher. But I figured if I put Petaluma John on the piano, it just it didn't sound right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I used Petaluma Pete so that uh, it would bring in the name of the town and at the same time uh, help me stay out there to do the job that I want to to help pay Petaluma pack back for being such a great town. Yeah, so g give me a little something here. When people first stumble upon you, what might they hear? They might hear this.
dancing all around you. You must. Yeah, especially the kids. It's yeah. great to watch. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody ever try to come up and play? Do you let them tickle the ivories or always, no? Always. Yeah. Um, the children a lot of times will want to play and they're terrible. Yeah. Uh, and that makes it even more fun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have a Facebook page that I put all that stuff up on so people can appreciate it. Yeah, look, as somebody who was forced to take piano lessons when she was little and hated it, I love to meet people who play because they have the love of it in their heart. What do you say to parents who are thinking, I wish my kid would practice piano? Uh, well, it isn't just piano, but I will say that making music makes kids smarter. Yeah. It helps in their development as children. It also helps seniors. Making music, instead of just listening to it, making music makes you smarter. Can I tell you, my, our band teachers in, in elementary and middle school have been some of my favorite people. Can you play us a little more, a little something? Oh, sure. Okay. Petaluma Pete is going to stay here all morning long. He's tickling the ivories. He's bringing so much joy. People are kind of bouncing around. Even members of our KTV family. Petaluma Pete, thank you so much. When we come back, we're highlighting another golden spot in this beautiful town, and that is the River Park Foundation. It's about nature. It's about conservation. It's about enjoyment. And we have that for you when we come back on this beautiful zip trip to Petaluma. Stay with us. Can I try? Hey, welcome back to gorgeous Petaluma. We are talking about all the fun things you can do, see, eat here, and now we're going to talk about activity in the form of conservation, preservation, and really opening up one of Petaluma's beautiful natural resources. I am so happy to welcome to the nine Sierra Lawrence and Jorge Servine. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having you us. You are with Thank the River Park us. Foundation. A lot of people know there's a river here in Petaluma, but what does it mean to you, and what's the, the, the mission of your foundation, Sierra? Yeah, thanks so much for having us this morning. Uh, the Petaluma River Park Foundation was formed by a group of citizens here in town uh, that came together to acquire a piece of land that was for sale on the open market. It's 24 acres of open space on a peninsula in the middle of the river, surrounded by water. Uh, in 2019, we formed the nonprofit and raised the funds with the support of over 400 households here in the community uh, to acquire the land and launch the project in 2020. And so what's the goal for that land, Jorge? Well, the ultimate goal is to build a community park where the community has a, the ability to uh, co-create something for that will be used for our community in general. How important is the river to Petaluma? I mean, I know a long time ago it was industry, frankly it was money. How has it developed and changed over the years? It's a, it's, I grew up here in this town and the river was somewhat um, made fun of and kind of you know, not really a big part of our lives. And what's so exciting in the last several years is people have really started to embrace the river as this incredible resource in the middle of our city for recreation. Um, it's aesthetically beautiful, and it really creates a lot of opportunity for, um, you know, communities to come together in public spaces and, and for us to come and be together. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially, I mean, look, I love, we're in the open air, and I think, you know, especially over the past few years, Jorge, just being outside. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you, a lot of people feel a lot safer. It, it's, 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 some, it's, it's the first thing people will do, right? Yeah. Instead of going straight to that, you know, inside little, you know, tiny restaurant that, that's all closed up. Has your mission changed at all since you bought the land in the past two years or no? No, absolutely not. I mean, Sierra can chime in as well. Um, our mission has always been to purchase a, a park, which that has been accomplished. The next step in our process is to develop the park. You know, there'll be a huge fundraising effort that'll come as a result of that. But our mission has always really stayed core to the values of the organization. Yeah, values yeah. of conservation, really appreciation for the land and for everything nature gives us. So how soon can we play and have fun on this on this parcel of land? Absolutely. You, you can play as early as tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. I mean, the park is open seven days a week. It's free for everyone to use. As part of our way to bring the community back into the park is that we do an, a monthly walk toward of the park with one of our volunteers to walk you through and guide you through the mile long loop that will take you around the property. It's a great time for family to come, you know, invite everyone to, to join us. Uh, and tomorrow, 9 30 in the morning. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. I'll do that. Then I'll stop by the farmer's market. It'll be a perfect day in Petaluma. Exactly. Love to have when you. it comes to edu you know, because so, like you said, you grew up here, Sierra. So many people are now looking to the younger generation, right, to really, you know, carry on and maybe do better than, than, than what we've done when it comes to protecting the environment. How important and really how do you get that message across? Absolutely. I mean, the mission of the Petaluma River Park is to connect people, art, and nature. And the beauty of this property is that it is completely undeveloped and wild. It is surrounded on three sides by 
the river. So there's a, a great opportunity to not only protect but to enhance the riparian habitat that exists there. Um, as but Those it's are a, reptiles, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's a, that's <laughs> I'm making sure my seventh grade science is still there. You're living. doing great. Got Absolutely. It. It's really just any interface between land and water, but it's a really core part of our ecosystem in a healthy environment. Uh, but at the same time, the land is in the middle of the city. It is right next to the bus and train station, a stone's throw from downtown, easily accessible from east and west side. So our vision really is to simultaneously be, um, you know, a, 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 a natural resource, a, a source of nature and park and open space, but also to be a community and cultural resource for the city. Um, and we're really committed to hearing from all of our communities here in town about what they want to see happen out of the park. I love it. And what, what I love is that if you live in Petaluma, you don't have to drive 45 minutes to get there. No. It is right here. You just fall out your front door. Right, the Absolutely. Of the city. Well, congratulations to both Sierra and Ore River Park Foundation. You guys are doing great work. Thank you so well, much for having you. us. Thank you so much of for having course, us. Of course, of course, of course. Speaking of the river, I mean, look, we cannot overstate the importance of the Petaluma River to Petaluma itself. And I don't know, you know, what, what your core strength is, how your abs are right now, but if you want to develop them, we have an opportunity for you. When we talk about stand-up paddle boarding, Sal is our guy. We're going to talk to him about some great opportunities to go paddle boarding here in Petaluma. So stay with us as we continue this fabulous zip trip on a gorgeous Friday morning. I'm so glad I knew I was the reptiles thing. <laughs> The mood has mellowed. The clouds have covered Petaluma, but they are still bringing the sunshine. Spike Sykes and his awesome hot cake still playing for us here as we are taking you live to Petaluma for our first zip trip of the summer season. We are live along the pedestrian bridge here, right along the Petaluma River. A minute ago, I saw a woman and her dog on a paddleboard in South Castaneda. I thought, man, we are here. You're right along the water as well, and it's not just paddleboards people can take out on the river, right? That's right, and you saw Liz and her dog Francine because they uh, got on the water right here in front of me, uh, and uh, here we are at the dock. I want to bring in Zach Alva, who is part of the Rivertown Racers, and not only that, but you're a Petaluma native uh, son here, born here, and now you're going to be competing nationally in racing kayaking. Tell us more about that sport. Yeah, so basically we are in a very tippy boat, and you're at a competition, you're in nine or ten lanes and we go distances of 200, 500, and 1,000 meters um, all out sprint as fast as you can go and then in addition to that there's a 5k which is a mass start so everyone goes all at once and you do laps around the normal course. Now Zach you were kind enough earlier to tell me the difference between you know some of the kayaks you see are recreational you see people cruising along you do racing kayaking it's a little more athletic a little different but there's something for everyone on the water there's rowers and what he told me was you can if you see a rower they're the ones who are facing backwards but you're you're facing forward and you're uh, racing and you're going to be competing on the national team. Uh, this year, I will actually not be competing on the national team. Oh, so ne when are you? You told me you were uh, doing next year, is it? Yeah, I'm going to be training uh, for national team trials next April with my younger brother, and we're going to go out for a double 500 meters and see what we can do. You're 24, which uh, we were laughing about this. You might be getting a little long in the tooth, right, for <laughs> our people who are doing this competitively. You still think you got it? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there's people in the sport actually in their mid-30s, so I still got a bit of time in me. Yeah, I don't mean to discourage you, man. So, I, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I want to uh, ask you about uh, this racing kayaking is Petaluma has a long history of this, right? Yeah, so our club, Rivertown Racers, was founded back in 2013 with the vision of Susan Starbird and Misha Riskiewicz, who are our head coaches to date. Started with just one paddler for a couple years and then... Uh, slowly grew the club and now we're 20 kids strong so uh, pretty decent sized club and happy to be happy to be paddling on the river and it's a good group of kids well Zach Alba thank you for joining us what what I, I can't I mean you're standing here with this what is this so this is a special sprint paddle um, big differences I suppose between what you would consider a, a typical kayaking paddle is this is a, a wing blade so it's shaped kind of like an airplane wing so it grabs the water real nicely and it's also a bit larger so you get a lot more power out of each stroke. 
remember us when you're on the national team. Come back and see us, will you? Absolutely, Sal. Thank you. All right. All right, uh, guys, so you heard it. Uh, this young man is going to be competing next year on the national team, and when we see him on national television, we saw him in Petaluma first. <laughs> We'll go, hey, we know that guy, right? We know that guy. Awesome, yep, Sal, thank right. you so much. Good luck to you. Congratulations. I mean, you, you can't escape a trip to Petaluma without using the word quirky. And there are some things and some people you will only find in Petaluma, right? Little bites to eat here and this, you know, cute little curio shop there. And then we have this gentleman. His name is Eli. Eli, now, look, as a mother of two boys, I have to ask, what are you doing to yourself? Have, have you, uh, hi, I understand uh, you've been crowned the sexiest man in Petaluma. I don't know about crowned, <laughs> but I am down. I'm so happy they got you on camera right now. Last time they sent me a real dog, but hey, how you doing? <laughs> Suspect, you're a sweetheart. You grew up here. You're representing the town. Tell me, how did you choose to do it this way? I choose nothing. I was born... To do this. Looking so good. Yeah. I figured... It would be a crime against humanity not to take this and bring it out to the world. And to share it with the masses. Tell me, where do people see you all around town? They see me when the sun hits the glistening sweat on my chest. <laughs> I see, I see. It's like the bat signal. Yeah, yeah, and people just radiate and, and flock to you. Um, I notice what I like about you is that you're on roller skates. These are not blades, right? I grew up on roller skates. Yeah. Tell me about your love for the wheels. I have no particular love. It's very practical. Yeah. It gets me from point A to point B. <laughs> and, and, very here, and, and here you are, and here you are. Um, what kind of reaction do you get when you're out and about around town? I generally pay no attention. Okay. I, get, I wear extra dark prescription sunglasses so I don't have to see a thing. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what these people give you, it's what you're doing, you're doing it for yourself. Do you have tricks? Tricks? Oh, I don't think that's legal yet. No. <laughs> okay, can you do some stunts for us? Stunts? Like jump off into the no, river? No, 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 like something that'll keep you back on dry land safely. Like when people Here. say, show me your stuff, what do you show them, Eli? Oh, God. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love it. You're throwing your whole self into it quite literally. <laughs> do you have like, can I just call it like a regular day job? Like do you go to an office in a suit and people well, don't see, know? The mayor pays me millions of dollars to come out here and spread the all love. kinds of stuff. Okay, love, the love. Yeah. Okay. Love. Okay, the love. You're spreading the love. Well, love. Eli, look, if you want to take off and do some tricks, thank you so much. Oh, I'm going to take off so good, baby. Oh, good. You have a great rest of your day. Look, Eli, boy, I promised you quirky and you got it, right? I mean, look, Frank and Sal, I don't know if Eli's going to come swing by your way, but that is a perfect example of what Petaluma has to offer, right? Quirky only in this town and we have to highlight the fact that this is just the very beginning of our zip trip schedule you guys are coming along with me and we're also turning to our viewers because next we are up in union city we want to know from you if you live work play love in union city tell us where the best spots are we need your picks for the taste of the town the base pl best places for your family to hang out in union city head on over to ktv.com slash zip trips and we are filling up the gas tank because we are hitting the road all summer Every other Friday after gorgeous Union City, you see our schedule here. Hello, Benicia. Good morning, Santa Clara, Pacifica, Dublin, and Martinez. What a way to kick off a we're back summer. So, Frank and Sal, how about I meet you at the bake shop right down the street here? What a gorgeous way to start the day. Sounds Gentlemen, good. thank you for coming with us on the zip trip. And if we just want to say a great thank you to the city of Petaluma for all that you have to offer, I think we all agree. It's been a great first day out. Thank you.